V8 is officially dead, and four-cylinder engines are getting ever more popular. But if you're shopping for a car now, which engine layout should you get? An inline four, a V4, or a boxer four, which is more reliable, which will give you more power and performance, and which one gives you a better driver experience? Today we're looking at which four-cylinder engine is best regardless of car brand. At the highest level, on the surface, the inline 4, V4, and Boxer 4 differ by shape and form factor. The inline 4 is so named because the cylinders line up in a straight row. The V4 is named because it's in the shape of the letter V. And the Boxer 4 is a type of flat engine with two banks of cylinders on opposite sides of a common crankshaft. But here's the thing, each engine has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. The inline 4 is a very common engine design today, but it's also been described by some as a ticking time bomb. The V4 engine stands out for being small small and sturdy, yet it's less common than the inline 4. And the Boxer 4 is a shorter length and lower center of gravity. It's a signature feature of Subaru, and yet it's also been the culprit behind several Subaru recalls. If you were to randomly select a handful of passenger cars, chances are that the majority have an inline 4 engine, also called the straight 4. The reason why the inline 4 is so popular really all boils down to the engine's simplicity. It has one cylinder head, one cylinder bank, and one valve train. You can't get more simple than that. It only has one exhaust manifold. Since it has fewer moving parts compared to engines with multiple cylinder banks, we're talking about less energy getting lost. Because of its simplicity, it's cheaper to manufacture an inline 4 engine. It's also easy to repair. Since the cylinder head is the highest point, accessing spark plugs in the valve train is easy. The inline 4 is also lightweight. Speaking of problems, let's jump back to the inline 4 engine. It has its own slew of problems too, no matter who the manufacturer. First of all, inline 4s rarely ever exceed 2.5 liters or 3 liters. Also, compared to other engine layouts, the inline 4 has a high center of gravity. There was a study that was done in a 2011 model year cars with the inline four engines. Well, it found out there were very few examples where a newer four cylinder matched both the fuel economy and power of a newly designed six cylinder. The smaller engines could also match the fuel economy or power, but rarely match both. Also, the four cylinder engines had an increased problem rate by almost 10 problems per 100 vehicles. I'm talking about things like the lack of engine power or even a hesitating engine. By the end of the 2000s, soaring gas prices and a crumbling economy caused consumers to be more budget-minded, especially when it came to gasoline consumption. This caused inline fours to become even more popular. They were everywhere. The Volvo 2.0-liter drive e-engine had such a complicated computer system that it's been described as begging to be broken. Or GM's 2.0-liter Ecotec engine that got its Camaro ranked as one of the least reliable cars ever tested. Or even the Mini's 1.6-liter turbo engine that ended up being described as a ticking time bomb. Timing chain and cooling system problems are two key contributing factors to this engine's short life. But let's talk about Mazda's inline four Sky Active engine. It has an aluminum block and cylinder head with a pair of chain driven overhead cams. I'm talking four pistons, 16 valves, and one spark plug per cylinder. But what's interesting about the Sky Active engine is that the pistons are domed like a performance piston to raise compression and have a small cup on the top that's like a diesel piston. The cup acts like a mini combustion chamber. When fuel is injected, the cup allows the flame front to spread directly into this recessed cup on top of each piston. This means faster combustion a lower risk of detonation, but it can also cause some problems. For example, one problem was that the engines or the accessory mode weren't just shutting off. That was caused by one of two things. First, there was an issue with the transmission selector level module. And second, there was a problem with the brake pedal position sensor. To determine the operation of the starter button, both the gear lever and brake pedal inputs are used. But if the transmission lever happens to read any other gear than park, the button would not exit out of accessory mode. The engine also had problems with misfires and ice buildup. When an engine is working properly, the only two byproducts coming from the tailpipe should be carbon dioxide and water. That's it. The problem was that water from the combustion and condensation would build up in the exhaust and freeze. The frozen water ended up restricting the exhaust system's main silencer when the car was first started. That caused random and specific cylinder misfire codes. Mazda has since created an updated main silencer to allow the water to drain out. 
The engine can also face issues due to carbon buildup. The reason usually comes down to oil and vapors from the positive crankcase ventilation system. These engines have a large oil separator under the intake manifold on the side of the block. If excessive vapors get past the PCV valve, this can cause carbon deposits. These vapors can then get loaded with hydrocarbons over time, form chunks that stick to the intake valves, and that causes a carbon deposit problem. The problem can usually be traced back to cheap conventional oils. You see, your average oil will have high volatility numbers. That means it'll vaporize quickly when it's exposed to heat. Cheaper oils can become thicker over time and won't lubricate as well. And that also means there's a greater volume of oil vapor that the PC system has to process. On top of that, these engines can also have serious oil pump problems. An oil pump system enables the engine to circulate lubricants to all parts without any external system. You need an oil pump so that every running component in the engine is lubricated correctly. But once that oil pump fails, that's going to stop all the moving parts of your engine from functioning properly. Oil pump failure can be caused by irregular oil changes, sludge, and debris buildup, wear and tear, and broken oil passages. It can get so bad that the oil pump might even need to be completely replaced. The V4 engine, on the other hand, is far less common in the car market. It's a piston engine design where the four cylinders share a common crankshaft that's arranged in a V-shape. Normally, three main bearings support the crankshaft since the two banks of the cylinders share two crank pins. The V configuration can be positioned in different angles. The V4 is wider than a traditional inline four. It's also pretty short since there's only two cylinders in a row. Basically, because of its small size, it also means that it's pretty stiff. The V4 is a shorter crankshaft and is more balanced, so you get less vibrations from a V4 than an inline 4. If the cylinder bank on a V4 is at a 90 degree angle, the primary forces from each cylinder bank cancel each other out, and that leads to an overall smoother running engine. But here's the thing. One of the main reasons why the V4 is rare in cars is because the engine is rather complicated. A V4 needs two cylinder heads, two exhaust manifolds, two valve trains, and twice as many camshafts as the inline 4. More parts means higher cost for car manufacturers to make a V4 engine. On top of that, a V4 with less than 90 degrees between the cylinder banks needs a balancing shift, and that makes things even more complicated. Also, V-angled engines take up a lot of space in an engine bay, and we're talking about a 90 degree V4 can quickly eat up the volume under the hood, unlike a slimmer inline 4. Honestly, the V4 engine is rare because the best thing it has going is its compact size, which isn't enough incentive to justify the manufacturing cost most of the time. That's why most car makers opt for an inline 4 for most passenger cars. The Boxer 4 engine features pistons that move toward each other horizontally. In fact, the movement of the pistons almost look like boxers throwing the punches in the ring. Really, the hallmark of the Boxer engine is that it has two cylinder banks and each piston has its own crank pin. Because the pistons move in opposite to one another, they counterbalance each other, and that creates an overall smooth running engine. Did you know that Subaru has been outfitting its vehicles almost exclusively with boxer engines for over 40 years? The one exception to this general rule is the EN engine series, which is used in Subaru key cars and trucks. The reason Subaru has taken this route for over four days is because of the many advantages of the boxer engine. Here's one of the most important benefits of a boxer engine, low center of gravity. That means it's more stable and responsive than the traditional inliner V engine. And that makes it safer too. If you'd ever get off in a frontal crash, the engine's more likely to drop below the passenger compartment instead of into it because the engine sits lower to the ground. Another benefit of the Boxer is the cooling system. Because of the engine's horizontal profile, oil and coolant remains are more evenly dispersed throughout instead of sinking down as you'd see in an inline or a V engine. By the way, don't get me wrong, Subaru may be known for boxer engine configurations, but that doesn't mean its cars are perfect. In fact, it's seen its share of various mechanical problems. For example, in April 2020, Subaru issued a recall for the 2019 model year Subarus that had been manufactured between June 2018 to February 2019. We're talking some 188,000 cars. The problem was a faulty fuel pump that caused the Boxer 4 engines to stall. And by faulty, I mean a cracked fuel pump. If that were to happen when the vehicle was in motion, it could result in a crash. In 2019, Subaru recalled over 450,000 models here in the States because of its Boxer 4 engine computer issues. Apparently, the computer unit wasn't programmed properly. The system continued to power the ignition coil even after the motor had been shut off. That led to higher temperatures, and a higher temperature meant that power could suddenly be lost and the engine wouldn't turn on. A year prior, in 2018, Subaru issued a recall to replace a valve spring fracture that could lead to Boxer 4 engine noise, malfunction, and even engine stalling. 
On top of that, Subaru has received multiple complaints over the years from owners over excessive oil consumption with its Boxer 4 engines. Now, there was never an official recall, but a class action lawsuit was filed. According to one owner, his legacy was using so much oil that he had to start topping off his own oil to one quart every two weeks. The lawsuit also claimed that over 650,000 people owned or leased one of these models. The lawsuit ended up being settled, and Subaru agreed to replace these engines with a redesigned Boxer engine. In general, the Boxer engine's flat layout makes it harder to work on because the cylinder head is right up against the side of the engine. So even a simple test like swapping out spark plugs feels a lot harder. As well, double the number of head components means more parts and more components that will break down and need replacing. But now you tell me, what engine do you have and what's your pet peeve about it? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.